unlock the hidden patterns that power the world of programming with an exploration into the realm of algorithms. Whether you're a curious beginner or an experienced coder, dive into this journey that unveils the secrets behind efficient problem solving and optimized code. Introducing you to the heart of programming logic that is algorithms. Imagine having the key to solve complex challenges methodically, crafting elegant solutions that stand the test of time. Algorithms are the backbone of innovation, driving everything from search engines to artificial intelligence. Join us in a comprehensive exploration that transcends the syntax of any language. We will dissect algorithms step by step and showcase their real-world applications through captivating examples. From sorting data to optimizing processes, we will empower you to think algorithmically and design solutions that elevate your coding skills to new heights. Bid farewell to trial and error and embrace the precision of algorithmic thinking. Unleash the potential within you to create efficient, scalable and innovative solutions shaping the digital landscape. Welcome to the world where algorithms empower you to build the future one optimized line of code at a time. Next we'll understand the factors of an algorithm. Modularity. Modularity is one of the factor of algorithm where the complex problem is broken down into smaller subparts or modules. Modularity makes the algorithm more easy to understand, to debug and to maintain. Next is correctness. So an algorithm should be designed in such a way that it should produce or provide an expected or correct output for all possible inputs. Maintainability. An algorithm should be designed in such a way that it should be easy to maintain. Functionality. When it comes to functionality of an algorithm, it is related to the efficiency of an algorithm. If an algorithm is efficient enough, then it should give us highest optimization along with using the less memory space. Next is finiteness. Eventually, the algorithm should be designed in such a way that it should terminate after finite number of steps. Next is user-friendly. An algorithm should be defined or designed in such a way that it should be easy for an user to understand. Basically, an algorithm is written in normal English language where all the developers can understand it easily. Simplicity. If an algorithm is simple, then it is simple to understand, right? It should be designed in such a way that it should be very simple to understand for any developer to design his program. Extensibility. Algorithms also should be designed in such a way that it should be easy to redevelop or do some modifications to the existing algorithm. Next, we will understand how to design an algorithm. So here we'll take an example of real time and understand how to write an algorithm in a step by step process. For example, if we have to write an algorithm for making tea or algorithm to prepare tea, the first step is that you will place the fresh water in a kettle, right? And then the next step is that you will boil the water to match your style of tea. Next, you'll put the tea bag in the cup. Now you will pour the boiling water into your cup. Next you will add the milk as per your required consistency. Then you will add some sugar to it according to your taste. Then you will stir the tea in the cup. Finally the tea is ready to be served. Right? This is the basic step that you follow in order to make some tea. Now let us write the algorithm to add two numbers. For example, if you have two numbers to be stored in two locations, that is A and B, our main intention is to add two numbers and store the result, that is 10, in a different location, that is C. Right? So, we will see how to write the algorithm to perform this 
addition operation. So we have a value 5 in A and value 5 in location B. Now our intention is to add and store the result in C. So how to write the algorithm to perform this operation now? So the first step always will be the start step. So start the problem first. Then you have to take the values of A and B. As I wrote A 5 and B 5, so that 5 is the number that is taken from the user, right? So we have to read the values that is given from the user and store it in location A and B. The next step is that you have to add the numbers, right? You will be adding the numbers that is A and B and storing the result in C. That is our next step. What is the next step that you do? Is this the end of our problem? No, right? We will be storing the result after which we have to display it, right? So the next step is that you have to display the content or the value that is in the location C. Then we have to stop the problem. You can't leave it there like that after displaying the result. You have to also stop the problem. So these are the steps that are involved in the addition of two numbers. So next, we will also write the algorithm to multiply two numbers. It is very similar to the one which we already learned, that is addition of two numbers. Here, what we do, we have to multiply. So multiplication is the logic or the operation that is to be performed in order to get the result, right? So we have to take the input from the user that is A and B and store it in the location A and B. And then we have to perform the multiplication operation and store the result in C. So now let us see how to write the algorithm for this problem. So the first step will always be what? We have to start the problem. So the step one is start the problem. Second step is we have to take the input from the user and store it in location A and B. So what is that next step that we have to do? We have to get the values of A and B. Next is we have to perform the operation. What operation is it? So multiplication operation. So step three is find the product that is for the numbers A and B and store the result in C. Now, is this the end of our problem? No, right? We have to display the result. So the next step is to display C. After all this process, we have to stop the problem. So the final step would be stopping the problem. Stop the problem. So next we will see how to write the algorithms to swap two numbers. So what is the meaning of swapping two numbers? We have to just interchange the values that are there in A and B. For example, if the input is 5 in A and 10 in B, my result should be 10 in A and 5 in B, just the interchange of the values that is stored in the location A and B. So we'll first understand what is the logic behind doing this process. So here to swap two numbers, I am considering some temporary location that is C. Okay, so now I will have temporary location C as empty and we have A and we have B, right? We have 5 in A and 10 in B. How to achieve this output? We will see. The logic behind it is, first thing, I will move the content that is present in A to C. How can I do that? So, to do that, I have to assign the value that is present in A to C. So, this is the logic that we write. So, now what happens? C will have 5 in it. A will have nothing in it. And B will still have 10 in it. So, this is what we get after this step that is initialization step. Then what we can do? Now A is empty. Can we bring in the value 10 from B to A? Yes, we can. So the logic will be assign the value that is present in B to A. Now what happens? Now 5 remains in C. 10 comes to A and B becomes empty, right? So what is the final step that we can do? we can bring in the value of C to B, right? So what is the logic here then? We have to assign the value that is present in C to B. So our final output will be C empty, A will have 10 
and now we will have what? 5. So can you see? We got the expected output. So what is the logic behind getting this swapping done? So A is assigned to C, B is assigned to A and C is assigned to B. So this is the logic to be followed in order to get our desired output, right? So we will see how to write the algorithm for this process, right? So the very first step will be what? We have to start the problem, right? And then this next step will be we have to take the input values and store it in location A and location B, right? And then what we have to do? We have to do the logic. We have to perform the logic that is swapping of two numbers using some temporary location. So that logic I'll write. The one which we already learned, right? So this is the logic. So that is what we will be doing in our step three. Then what should we do? We have to display the result, right? So we have to display the final result that is A and B. So this is our output. So this is what we will be displaying in our step four. Then we have to stop the problem, right? We have to end the algorithm with stopping it. So that is our last step. So this is the steps that you follow in order to swap two numbers using the temporary variable. So next is the algorithm where we will be finding the largest of two numbers. So what is the meaning of this? So given two numbers, you have to tell me which is the largest number. So how to write algorithm for this program, right, or this problem? So first thing, as usual, we have to start the problem. Then the second step is that you have to read the values of A and B. After reading the values of A and B, the time I gave you to decide which number is greatest, what do you do? Immediately, you will compare the numbers, right, with each other to tell which is greater. So that is what we have to do. After comparing the numbers, that is A and B, I can tell that B is greater now, right, or B is largest number. So the step three will be comparison. For example, now if A is greater than B, considering A as 5 and considering B as 10, this condition fails, right? So A is not greater than B. In this step, we have to check if A is greater than B, then go to step 5. Is it greater than B now? No, right? 5 is not greater than 10. This fails. So this step uh, we need not go to step 5. We have to go to step 4. What is there in step 4 then? In step 4, we have to tell that B is largest, right? Now, according to our example, B is largest. So, that is why we have to tell that print B is largest and then go to step 6. So, what is there in step 5 then? It is print A is largest, which means if B is greater than A, if the condition fails, then we will be printing B is largest to go to step 6. So, in then in the step 6, it is stop. Or else, if this condition becomes true, that is, if step 3 becomes true, that is, if A greater than B, then go to step 5. So, what do we do? We will skip step 4 and we will directly go to step 5 and we will print A is largest and we will end the problem by stop. So, these are the steps that you follow in order to find the largest of two numbers. This is how you write the algorithm for doing the problem. 